Hi, I'm Joe Ellison, and I'm back with the tenth and final excerpt from my coming-of-age fantasy, Mr. Lake. <laughs> um, it is a tale of King Arthur's Round Table set in 1960s suburbia. Let us join our hero, Joe, his best friend, Billy, and their female classmate, the surprisingly well-read but intolerably tolerant Sheila, inside Mr. Lake's abandoned home as the trio search for Lake's mysterious things and find instead a cache of old, very old, nearly ancient military medals. Let's jump into Joe's head and see what's going on. I put my fingers to my forehead to hold my brain in. I needed a few seconds to think. You're right. He must collect them. That's it. Mr. Lake must collect old medals. He can't have. You don't know that. I'd forgotten about Sheila. She stepped toward us from the doorway. Maybe the medals are his. I told you he was Fay. Don't talk crazy. I took the Medal of Honor from Billy and rolled all three of them into the cloth. Mr. Lake's old, but no one's that old. Sheila smiled rather than laugh at us. Did you ever hear the story of the wandering Jew? No. I stuffed the rolled up cloth into my pocket. Half of it stuck out. Sheila spoke in a smooth, storytelling voice she'd never used before. It's a story they told in the Middle Ages about a Jewish shoemaker who laughed at the Lord as he was carrying his cross. The Lord told him that he was going, but that the shoemaker would have to wait for him to return. What happened? gulped Billy. The shoemaker waited a long time, Sheila grinned. He lived and lived. He outlived his family. He outlived everyone he knew. He didn't die. He couldn't. He's still waiting. They say he'll live until the Lord returns on the last day. Waiting and waiting Living and living all those years, the shoemaker found no rest. He started to wander. He wandered from place to place, country to country, year by year, age through age, waiting for the Lord to come back. He fights in wars here and there, now and then, looking for death, some say, others that he tries to atone for his blasphemy by protecting the weak, by doing justice. That could be the hoodoo that's on Mr. Lake. Billy started breathing hard. She's scaring me, Joe. Stop scaring him, Sheila. I didn't say it was, she walked past the two of us, just that it could be. She shifted back to her normal voice. We better go. We're wasting time. Sheila was getting a bit too bossy for me. Where do you think we're going? She turned around in the doorway to the kitchen. That's up to you, but wherever it is, we better get there. I think Larry was here. He found what he was looking for. We've got to get to him before he sells it to Leon, or worse, runs into that cat. I couldn't argue. She made sense. If it was Larry who took it, nine chances out of ten, he went home. He's not afraid of his mother, and his father's probably sleeping off a drunk. Unless his brother-in-law has dropped in, home's the best place for him. Then, Sheila turned away, into the kitchen, we go to Larry's. I took Billy by the arm and dragged him after her. It had turned to dusk. The three of us stepped out the back door onto the landing into a rat's nest. 
And if you want to find out what's in that rat's nest, you'll have to buy a copy of Mr. Lake. Mr. Lake is available at the links below in the description box. It's available in Kindle or paperback formats on Amazon. And down in the description, you will find links to my other works, to my Amazon author page, to my website, etc. Other things as well. Well, that's it for Mr. Lake excerpts. I will be back soon with excerpts from other of my works. And if you want to hear me reading in the meantime, then you can click on one of the boxes that's appeared be beside or above my head. If you liked this video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button, perhaps even hitting the button to subscribe to this channel. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you again real soon.